What I want to show today is the Power Automate platform. And right now we're looking at the Power Automate portal. And I'm going to show you a series of different flows you can create with Power Automate. Now, the first one that I want to show is what can you do with any suite of Office 365? We also call this the seated version of Power Automate. You can also think of this as a kind of a trial version of Power Automate that you get when you purchase a suite of Office 365. So I'm going to show you how you can integrate Power Automate with SharePoint. So here I've got a SharePoint site with a very basic SharePoint list. And what I want to do is I want to create an event that anytime a new item in SharePoint gets created, let's kick off a workflow. So I'm going to go back into Power Automate. I'm going to do a new flow. And I want this to be an automated cloud flow. And this means that it's going to get triggered anytime a new item gets created. So we'll say my first SharePoint flow. And it's prompting us for different triggers. Triggers are just events to start a flow. You can also have these be instant, meaning that somebody's manually creating these. But in this case, we'll, we'll choose when an item is created. This takes us to the designer for Power Automate. So Power Automate being part of the Power Platform is a low code solution. So we're just kind of clicking different actions and then configuring them to do what we want. We're not coding. Um, we're not writing JavaScript or C Sharp or anything like that. So now I have, just have to choose the site list. So um, I'm going to choose my demo site as the name of the site collection. The list was called test list. And now we're going to start creating a workflow off of this. So the next step that I want to do is I want to use the built-in approval process for Power Automate. So we'll search for approval. And we're going to do a start and wait for an approval. Now, you've got a bunch of different options here. In this case, we're just going to say that the first person to respond to this will then move the workflow to the next step. Now, you can put a number of people in here. Um, we can give it a title. Now, what's really cool here I'm about to show is that Power Automate dynamically processes the output of any previous action and makes that available to you in a dropdown. So for the title, I could manually put this in, but I want to use what the title of the SharePoint item was. So in this case here, when I hit this dropdown, we can see all the values from that were outputted from when an item was created for the trigger of this flow. I want the title of my approval to be title. So I'm just taking whatever was in SharePoint, that's going to be the, the name of the approval. And then assigned to, I could put in somebody's email address, but in this case, I want to use whoever created the SharePoint item and I'm going to take their email. So there we go. We're just going to assign it back to them. Wouldn't do this in practice, but uh, normally you would probably have a group that you're going to send this out to, or maybe you would look up an uh, Active Directory to figure out who their manager was or who their team was. In this case, I'm going to make it simple. I'm going to send it back to myself, but that could be anything. Now, the next thing I want to do is I, I want to do some logic here. If this gets approved, I want to do one flow. I'm going to send out an email saying that this was approved. If it gets rejected, I'm going to have another um, branch there. So we're going to add a new step. And this step is going to be a control. You can think of this as an if else statement. And so we'll go ahead and pick the condition control. And now we've got kind of this nice little visual of this if else. And so the key here is the value is going to be the outcome of the approval step. So let's go ahead and choose outcome. And we want to say if the outcome is equal to approve, meaning that the first person to respond said approve, we'll go ahead and go into this yes condition. And here, what I want to do is I just want to send an email. So we're going to search for email and we'll say send an email with Office 365. Once again, the two line, I'm going to send it back to whoever initiated this. But once again, this could be anybody or any group. We'll say the title was approved. And then let's put the, the title of the SharePoint title. And notice here, we've got a couple different actions that were previous. So if I collapse the approval, we see that. Now we see the SharePoint one. So you can kind of pick what are the out outputs that you want from the specific step. So we'll put title in there. And then for the body, I'll just put a smiley face because it was approved. Now, now we got to figure out what are we going to do if it was rejected. So let's go ahead and send a different email if it were rejected. So we'll choose send an email again. Once again, we're going to send it to whoever created the flow. 
And the subject this time, we're going to say rejected. And we'll give it a title. And we'll say it's the frowny face because we're rejecting it this time. So I'm going to save that. So we just created our very first flow, low code, just dragging and dropping and configuring. Um, now what we want to do is we want to be able to test this. And Power Automate gives you some really powerful tools to actually debug and step through what's going on step by step when a flow gets kicked off. So I'm going to go here and say test. And I'm going to say that I'll perform the trigger action. So now this is actually going to pause until I actually create an item in SharePoint. So let's go into SharePoint. We're going to create a new item. And we'll say Steve's first test. We'll say save. Now, if I go back to Power Automate, we should see this kick off. So we'll see that the item got triggered because it was created. It's now pending the approval. If we go into the inbox, we should now see that there is a approval pending my review, which is cool. And I could just approve this right in the email itself. I just want to show you the other experience here. So in the Power Automate portal, there's also um, an action item center, which will show you any pending approvals that you have for the flow as well. So in here, we've got Steve's first test. And I'm going to say approve. And we'll go ahead and say confirm. And now once we did that, if we go back to the flow, we see that it's running, it's pending approval. So what happened there is I actually had another flow that was also kicking off on that same item. Let me go back into this approval. We'll approve that, say confirm. And now if we go back to the flow, we can now see that it succeeded. So what we saw before was that it was pending approval. So um, if you saw really carefully, this little green check was a yellow circle, just saying that that's the current step that it's at. You can also see all the output. So in particular, the outcome in this case was approved. And then when we go to the if else condition, we'll say that that was true, meaning that this branch was what's triggered. And so then we can actually see what were the outputs of the email as well, which is pretty cool. So you get step by step how you can kind of troubleshoot and how you can kind of trace through your flows. So the next thing I want to show is using the Power Automate service with what are called the premium connectors. Now, we mentioned before that with any suite of Office 365, you do get a seated version of Power Automate. There are some limitations with that. One of the limitations is that you only get what are called standard connectors. Effectively, that's really just any connector that's inside of the Office 365 contacts. And, and maybe some Azure connectors as well, but really that's kind of the context there. Once you step out of that context, there are what are called premium connectors, and that does require an additional paid license in addition to the seated version of Office 365. So I want to show you really quickly how you can kind of see which ones are standard, which ones are premium. In the portal, if you go to the connectors section, this will then load all the connectors that are available in Power Automate. And then if you hit this drop down over here, you can filter by standard and premium. Standard, if we kind of scroll through here, you'll see that these are mostly Office 365 services. Um, you know, Gmail is included in there as well. But you can kind of scroll through just to kind of get a feel for what's included with standard. And then if you filter to premium, this will then show you what are the things that um, in are included with a paid version of Power Automate. There's also Power Apps licenses that will include these premium connectors as well. So that's just kind of a quick how you can do that. The other thing that uh, you want to be mindful of is that in our government cloud, so in GCC, GCC High, and DoD, um, you will have a specific set of connectors that are available in those environments as well. So you just want to make sure that you're looking at the right environment when you kind of filter based on the connectors of standard and premium. Now what I want to do is I want to show you uh, a flow that is actually using a premium connector. In this case, the premium connector I'm going to show you is the word for business connector, which actually is a premium connector. And it's a premium connector because it gives you a couple of really cool features. And the one that I want to show you is um, using the word for business connector, where we can actually convert um, Word documents to PDFs on the fly. So let's just really quickly show you what this flow looks like. So in this case, the trigger is when a file is created in OneDrive, and this 
Trigger is part of the standard um, the standard offering of the connectors, but the the premium offering here is the convert Word document to PDF. So this is using the Word for Business connector. And so what I've got this set up is that anytime somebody adds a file to a OneDrive folder, I want to take that file and then um, convert it to a PDF and then post it back to OneDrive. So you can kind of think of this as uh, once people drag something into this repository, we're automatically going to do some processing to just go ahead and convert that to a PDF. In this case, I'll show you a simple example of taking a resume file and then creating a PDF off of that. So here is the OneDrive location where I'm going to put my files into. Um, and then I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and drop the file here. But what I want to do here is I first want to set up the test and I'm going to say that I'll perform the trigger action. And this is going to queue up our kind of debug experience for Power Automate. So we'll go ahead and say test. And now this is going to basically wait until something gets triggered for that specific flow. So I'm going to go to File Explorer and I'm going to drag a resume file into here. And then if we go back to the flow, we should see this uh, get kicked off here in a second. OK, so we can see that it got kicked off and it's um, right now at the stage of creating the file, meaning it's already converted to a PDF. It's now writing this back to OneDrive. And now we can see that the flow ran successfully. And if we go back to OneDrive, we'll see that uh, side by side with the Word doc is also a PDF file as well. We could open that up, take a look. And here's the, the original resume just in a PDF format. So everything that I've shown so far is using what are called cloud flows in Power Automate. And cloud flows are really um, just automations that are uh, going from one API to another to automate processes. Now, there is a whole other section of Power Automate called desktop flows, and these are really what our solution is for RPA. So you can get to that by just going to the different tab, and then you can see what are the associated RPA desktop flows that you've created. And we also recently released a Power Automate desktop tool that's intended to uh, make it really easy to create these RPA processes. So I'm going to walk you through an, a quick example here. I'm going to create a brand new one, and we'll call this uh, my first RPA. And now this is going to bring up a design experience um, on our desktop to be able to automate um, different actions. And now what I want to show here is um, the first example I'm going to show is, let's say that we have a legacy website and we manually have to put information into a form. And then we want to be able to um, scrape information off of that website to then be able to take it into some other flow so that we can kind of automate that instead of every day somebody logging into a site um, copying out data and then doing something with that. Let's try to automate that. And the first example here I'm going to show to try to um, showcase that is let's say that we want to go to Walmart and we want to go to walmart.com and figure out when is toilet paper in stock. So at the beginning of COVID, this was a big deal. Um, and I'm going to show you how could you actually automate that with using our uh, Power Automate RPA solution. So I'm going to go to Web Recorder here. And what this is going to do is it's going to let us record actions, in this case, inside of Microsoft Edge. Now, to get this set up, there is a, an extension you have to install into Edge or Chrome, but I've already set that up ahead of time. And now um, what we'll see here is that we have the browser on the left, and then we have our web, rec web recorder on the right. And whenever we're ready, we can click the Start Recording, and then it's going to record all of the actions we're doing inside of the site. So let's say start recording, and now I'm going to type walmart.com. And now I want to search for, in this case, toilet paper. So we'll go ahead and say enter. And the next thing I want to do is I actually want to click on whatever the first item is in the search results. So we'll go ahead and click on this. And notice there's a new step that got added for click element in the web page, so it's recording that. And then the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to take this information right here so that I could parse that out and figure out, is it in stock? And if it is, what's the location? In this case, we can see that it's available in Dumfries at the uh, 17,041 Jefferson Davis Highway. So I'm going to right click this, say extract value, and I want to take the text out of that element. And once again, that just got added to the page here. So let's go ahead and say finish. And that just concluded kind of our recording of that. Now, what's also really neat with this experience is that I can play this back. 
So if I go to run, what we'll see here in a second is that a new instance of Edge is going to open up. It's going to do the search for toilet paper. It's then going to click on whatever the first link is on this page. And then it's going to take out the item description for that. And what's really cool here is that you'll notice that the first hit that we got was different from when we recorded it. But in this case, it doesn't matter. It's only looking for that particular HTML element. And that's what it's going to get to extract it. So if I close this out, you'll now see on the right here that there's this new section for flow variables. And one of them is uh, called attribute value. And that is what we just parsed out of that one particular section. So we can see that it worked. And that's, that's really cool that that got automated there. Um, now, the other thing here is that uh, above flow variables are input and output variables. The difference here is that flow variables are specific inside of this flow that's running. Input and output variables, I'll show that in a second, but really that gives you a way to have other um, cloud flows call a desktop flow and then also specify what you want to go into this flow. So you can think of this example. I hard coded toilet paper, but I could also make that an input variable so that we could search for anything against walmart.com, not just toilet paper. And let me um, exit out of this and I'll show you one that I actually did that with. So let's go ahead and exit out. And now I'm opening up one that I had previously created and I'll show you kind of what I did to, to get it so that we have an input parameter here. Okay, so um, in the center here is the recording, just like I had showed previously. Um, I then, on my input and output parameters, added the search query as an input parameter. So if I were to just kind of look at this for a second, we can say edit. And now we can see that it's of type input, meaning this is something that's going to be specified when this gets kicked off. And I can also give it a default value. So I'm giving it the default value of toilet paper. If nothing is specified, that's what it's going to use. And then I also defined output variables. So the things I was scraping from the site, in this case, I'm taking the item name. So just the name of whatever the first element, in this case, toilet paper was, and then also the description. So when I was getting kind of the information about it being in stock or out of stock and which store is it available. Now, the only other thing that I added here is I did add a little um, step before the website automation kicks off. And I'm just replacing, if that search query has a space in it, go ahead and put the um, HTML encoded value, which is percent %20. So there's just a really quick kind of thing I did, but that allows me to give it a way to dynamically put in whatever the search query is. If you look here, we'll see that there's this variable syntax here, um, percent replace percent. That just means that this replaced flow variable will get pumped into whatever the query is for the Walmart search. Now we can test this again. Let's go ahead and run this. In this case, the default is going to be toilet paper, so this should launch a browser, pump in toilet paper, and then it's going to get the value out of that. Okay, so it's loading the search page that found a thing. Notice, once again, a different uh, item, which is cool, but it's then going to get the item title and also the item description at the end of that. And we can see it just completed. And so we'll stop that. Now, the next step with this is now that we've recorded our actions locally on our machine, we want to actually then be able to tie this into other flows. So let me close out of here. So what I've done here is I've actually created a cloud flow that calls that RPA process that we just created with Power Automate Desktop. And I'm going to kind of show what that looks like. So I created a cloud flow also called Walmart Search. And let's go ahead and take a look at this in the editor. So the trigger is a manually triggered flow, meaning somebody either triggers this in the Power Automate service or they do it on their phone. You could also add input here too. I did not do that. And so I'm hard coding in this case, toilet paper as the search query against Walmart. Now, when you add the Power Automate desktop action, it gives you a series of dropdowns. These will be all of the desktop flows that are available to you in your environment that you can add there. Now, the run mode, you have two options, attended or unattended. And what I'm going to show is attended. Attended means that the actual action's running on the end user's workstation. 
Now, the other thing that, that means is that the work the user has to be logged on to the workstation for this to run correctly. Typically, as people are getting started with RPA, they'll start with the attended RPA first. And as their organization gets more mature with RPA, they typically go to what are called unattended, meaning you could have a collection of servers that allow you to run these automations on a server without an end user being logged on to that environment. And those things can just kind of run whenever they need to without like somebody actually being logged in. And then the next step that I did is I took the output of that flow. In this case, it was getting the item name of whatever the toilet paper was for the first hit of the search. And then it was also getting the description, which is telling us, is it in stock? And if it is, which store should I go to? And you can do more sophisticated things with that, but I just wanted to just kind of show a very simple end to end, taking a cloud flow and actually automating an RPA um, process that we've automated with Power Automate Desktop on our machine. So let's go ahead and test that. So we'll go to say test, I'll perform the trigger action. And now I'm gonna run the flow. And we can go to the flow run page to kind of see where this is at. And then um, shortly what we should also see is a, um, new instance of Edge popping up on my machine that's going to run this automation against walmart.com. Okay, and here we go. So we can see that the new instance uh, ran and it went to the first item of the search results, which was in this case, Angel Soft Toilet Paper. And it's now gonna take the title, you can see the yellow text that's taking the title of the item. And then it's also gonna get the description of the item as well. And if we go back to the service, we can see that your flow ran successfully. We can drill into the details of the Power Automate desktop step, and you can see that it got the, the name of the toilet paper. And it also got the item description. And then the next thing we did with that is we sent an email, in this case to myself, with the name of the toilet paper and also the description. So if we go back to my email here, we should now see a new email in my inbox with that same information. So here we go, Angel Soft Toilet Paper, 18 mega rolls. And then um, we can see that right now it is currently in stock at Burke at 6000 Burke Commons Road. The next thing I want to show that you can do with Power Automate Desktop is actually automating legacy desktop applications. So before we showed um, automating a legacy web application, now I want to show you what it would look like to automate a desktop application. So I'm going to pull up a, a Win32 form. It's a very kind of simple form. Um, this application, what it does is it takes a name. So you just give it a form name. We we'll call it Steve's form. It takes the start date and the end date, and then it just calculates the difference between that. So let's give it a start date of the first of the year and an end date of uh, 12 slash one of December 1st. When we go ahead and submit that, all it does is just outputs what the report name is, um, the currently logged on user, so you can see that. Start date, end date, and then just the number of days between the start date and the end date. So a pretty basic thing, but what I wanna do is I wanna automate putting information into the input fields and then extracting whatever the text is that's being created here from the, the Win32 form. So I'm going to go back into Power Automate Desktop. I want to create a new flow. In this case, we'll say my first desktop automation. And we'll go ahead and say create. And we'll give this a second. This is going to now spin up a new instance of the, the workflow editor. And now, previously we used Web Recorder. In this case, we're going to now use the Desktop Recorder. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that. And now here is our Desktop Recorder. I'm also going to open up the Legacy Finance form, uh, Win32 form that I created. And now I'm going to go start recording. And we'll see a similar experience to when we automated a web application. So I go start recording. And here I'm going to say Steve's form. We'll give it a start date. Give it the end date, and then we'll say submit. And now what I want to do is I actually want to take the text right here. So I'm going to right click that and say um, get text. And now all the actions that I've wanted to do to this are complete now. I'll say finish. And now I'm back in the Power Automate flow and you'll see that these are all of the um, steps that it recorded. Now. The other thing that's really powerful here is that if I look at this action here, we can see that right now it put Steve's form and it kind of hard coded that into the text to fill in there. But I actually want to make there some variables so that I can pump that into this particular um, action. So let's go ahead and create an input variable here and we'll call this one the form name. 
And then here for the default value, I'll say um, Steve's first uh, input variable. And external name will also call that the form name. That's the name that's going to show up in the Power Automate service when you're configuring this. Um, and then description will say just enter the form name for the form. We'll create that. And now we've got this. But what's cool is I can go back to this step where I'm hard coding Steve's form. And instead of doing that, I can input a parameter now using the form name. And so we'll go ahead and save that. Now that's going to put that in there. Um, the other thing that we would want to do here is we do need to add an action to actually load initially this application. So let's search for application. And we can see there's a step now to run an application. I want to add that to the beginning of this workflow. And it's going to prompt us for a couple things. What's the path to the application? So I just have to do that real quick. We'll use um, Windows Explorer to find that. There we go. That's the executable for the Win32 form. All the other things we can just leave as is, and we'll save that. OK, so what I want to show now is just running this uh, app, this workflow. So we're going to click Run here. And we now see that uh, Win32 form prompt. And what we'll notice here for input is the Steve's first input variable got put in, which is cool. That's the first test that we used with our first input variable there. And then for the result here, we can see that that got extracted. If we hover over attribute value, we can actually see that it did get the right result there, which is really cool. OK, so let's see this all put together now with the legacy form using a Cloudflow to trigger that. So we're going to go into the legacy finance form that I've already kind of created. We'll take a look at what that looks like through the editor. And it's a similar kind of setup, except this time I added an input variable for somebody to put the form name which is then going to call the Power Automate desktop action, in this case, the legacy finance form. It's going to run attended. But then I'm taking that parameter that was inputted from the previous step, passing that over to the RPA action that we just recorded. And then lastly, sending myself an email with whatever the results are from that form. So we'll go ahead and test this. We'll perform the trigger action. And in this case, I have to give it a name. So I'm going to say uh, my first cloud flow. We'll go ahead and run that. We can now go to the flow runs page. And now we can see that it's running. And in a second, we should see the legacy finance form open up on my desktop because it's running in attended fashion. So there we go. We can see that prompting my first cloud flow, start date, end date, submit. And then it's going to extract whatever the results are from the results section of the app and then pump that into an email. And so we'll give this a second to complete. And then we'll take a look at what the email looks like in a second here. So we can see here that our flow successfully ran. And then we can see what the outputs were. So this was what it extracted from the form, which matches exactly to what we had here on my desktop. And then the next step was that it sent an email with the results of that as well. And if we go into the inbox, we can now see that's the email that just got sent out.